Hello, this is Russell Hawley coming to you from the Tate Geological Museum here at Casper College in Wyoming. And today I'm going to be talking a bit about Tyrannosaurus Rex and specifically the Tyrannosaurus Rex's brain. So uh, we can learn a bit about how an animal thought and how it lived its life by looking at the shape of its brain. So what I've uh, got here is an endocast. Now an endocast is a natural mold of the inside of a brain case. And uh, so that indicates the roughly the size and shape of an animal's brain. So this is a, uh, an endocast of a Tyrannosaurus rex brain. And what I've done here is trace it onto this piece of paper. And then when I was done, I drew a reptile brain the right size and shape to fit within the confines of that endocast. And one thing that you can't help but notice right off the bat is that that front part of the brain, the space for the olfactory bulbs, is just huge. It's a third the total size of the brain. And so that indicates that the Tyrannosaurus would have had a fantastic sense of smell. It would have been able to track down its prey from many kilometers away by following its nose like some sort of gigantic five-ton bloodhound. Now, the cerebral hemispheres are the part of the brain where the thinking uh, takes place. And there's not room for gigantic cerebral hemispheres in the Tyrannosaurus rex brain case. So uh, probably not a whole lot of heavy-duty thinking going on in there. And then behind that, we've got the optic lobes devoted to vision. And then finally, the cerebellum. I think of that as like the brain's autopilot, the things that happen in your body that you don't have to think about, like your digestive system and breathing when you're asleep and the beating of your heart. Uh, that's all controlled back here. And then finally, we've got the brain stem, this bit right here that would have left the brain, gone through the frame and magnum, the hole at the back of the skull, and connected to the spinal cord. Now over here, I've got for comparison a human brain. So this is what your own brain looks like inside of your skull. And by the way, this is a good time to clear up a common misconception. All the time, I hear people say that your brain is the size of your two fists put together. But unless you're the Incredible Hulk, uh, I don't think your fists are going to be quite as big as the hemisphere of a brain. So a human brain is actually a bit bigger than uh, the popular um, myth would have you believe. And I guess as long as we're on the topic of myths, I'll address the idea that Tyrannosaurus rex only had a brain the size of a walnut. Uh, here's once again the endocast. You can fit quite a bit more than one walnut in there. This is not a dinosaur with a walnut-sized brain. There were dinosaurs with walnut-sized brains, uh, Stegosaurus for example, but not Tyrannosaurus. In general, the meat-eating dinosaurs, the, uh, the predators, the theropods, have a larger brain in proportion to the size of the body than the herbivores do. And once again, how smart do you have to be to sneak up on a leaf? Now the uh, human brain has a truly enormous set of cerebral hemispheres. So the thinking part of the brain on a human is quite large. And uh, of course, that's why we're running the planet. Then back here, we've got the cerebellum. And then there's the brain stem coming out to attach to the spinal cord. But very important to our discussion is the olfactory bulbs. There they are. On a human being, they're no bigger than Q-tips. And we humans have one of the worst senses of smell in the animal kingdom.